Oh, so. Okay. So I am going to call the uh, meeting to order for the Dighton Commission on Disability. Today is Thursday, the 14th of January, 2021. And it is, I think, 5.02 p.m. Um, before we uh, go around and say who's here, I'm gonna ask if we could all take a couple of moments of silence to remember uh, folks in our town who have come ill or passed away from COVID or for any other illness or disease in our community or anywhere at all. Thank you very much. And if we could um, go around and introduce ourselves, um, I, as usual, do a, a, a roll call. I'll start with myself as the uh, co-chair, Jonathan Gale, and as I'm also the coordinator for the Dighton Commission on Disability. Uh, Kevin? Kevin Smith. Nicole? Nicole Mello. Ken? Ken Pacheco, non-voting member. Vaseline? Jocelyn Tavares. And Jen. Jen Dichkowski. And thank you all for doing that. Um, so <clears throat> the first thing on our agenda is the, and I might skip around a little bit if that's okay with everybody. Um, and I'll, I'll let everyone know where I want to go in relationship to the agenda the best I can. But the first thing is the pandemic response and preparation for the eventual rollout. Um, we don't know for sure when the rollout is going to be yet. Um, it's my understanding that the rollout potentially, which I think originally was thought would be sometime in mid-February to late February, um, could be pushed out to somewhere anywhere between April and June. Um, but I know the town is waiting, excuse me, for more guidance and doesn't have that yet. I have also spoken to, um, again, to the Mass Office of Disability and to the State Department of Health and Human Services who is overseeing a lot of the vaccination sites and coordinating a lot of the vaccination um, to find out if there's more guidance for persons with disability or homebound or shut-in and that guidance should be coming out next, I'm told next Monday or Tuesday. So um, we don't have it specifically as, as of yet. Um, I think that the this co coincides a little bit with the mailer so I'm going to be jumping to that as well in a minute. Um, as far as us having a, a seat with regard to the town's pandemic committee that was approved by the Board of Selectmen the other night when they met last night, um, so that hopefully um, I can report back. I don't know when the next meeting is. Ken, do you know when no, the pandemic no. committee meets? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I'll be in touch with Brett to find out when they meet. Uh, Brent is also, uh, has told me that he's also in that committee um, as the acting town administrator. So um, as soon as I know, I can show that everybody and give you much more of an update. But um, we were not approved yet as part of that same recommendation. We were not approved yet to be part of emergency preparedness. Um, I think the impression I got was that uh, Brett, as the acting town administrator, wants to reach out more to the other folks who are part of emergency preparedness and get their input and thought um, to see where they stand on it and how they feel about it. Um, I know that that is something that the Mass Office of Disability uh, strongly recommends, uh, emphasize the word strongly, and they would be happy to give a letter to the Dighton Commission on Disability on behalf of them recommending that we have a seat at that table too. So I'm probably gonna reach out to them tomorrow and ask them to provide that letter. I think it's important to let the emergency preparedness committee in general know that the state supports it as a responsibility that the town has. And um, you know, it will probably be me as the coordinator, but it doesn't have to be me as the coordinator. Um, anybody have any questions on that part of it so far? Okay, um, the next thing is the uh, budget for fiscal 22. 
And <clears throat> this is a touchy one, and I feel uncomfortable discussing the budget, to be honest, because I know it involves me. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. Um, Jocelyn, in the Dropbox folder, because it's harder for me to share, so I'm going to suggest to you where you can find something to pull it up for a second, if you could. Is Jocelyn with us? Hello? She's muted. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry, Jonathan, I'm just pulling it up. Okay, so in the Dropbox folder, there's, um, this is a Word document, by the way, that I'm gonna have Jocelyn pull up. I did, I pulled it from a separate spreadsheet because the spreadsheet is specifically set for people who have to use voice and it wouldn't have made sense to any of you. Um, it just would have been confusing visually. But Jocelyn, in the, the list of folders, there's the one for budgets. And then in that budget folder, you'll see something that says 2022. It's a Word doc. Sorry, I'm not quite there yet. Um, That's okay. It's the one that says budgets and plans. It's in that. Yeah. Program. That's where I was. And then the very first one says ADA for Budget Bros TAF 2022. Yeah. You see that there? The COD time tracking? Yes. That's okay. It. All right. I got it. Okay. You want me to share the screen? If you could, if you could share for a sec, yeah. And this okay. is to, to everyone. This is more of a Word doc in this format because um, it was easiest for me to, to put it to that way for now. Does everyone see it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, um, what this, what, what I did was, this goes back to the beginning of last September before Mallory had left. I was asked to track how much time I'm spending, along with uh, Justina, who is, you know, the person I have here that I do my regular administrative work. So. That's what you see here is a list going all the way, all the way down so that um, you can see how much time we've spent during the year. And it's slowly increased overall. It's somewhat stayed the same, but it's more last couple of months. It's gotten to be more time overall. And then if you go further down, I give you the, the amount of hours overall. So what I've done is, and this is why I say I feel uncomfortable, um, because the figure that the town was paying prior to, and I think Ken discussed this at one of our last meetings, was $2,000 for the year. Um, and that breaks down, as you can see, to $166 per month. And my overall cost for my paying Justina were higher than that, roughly. They were, you know, a little bit, there's not much of a difference. So what I thought about was the actual amount of time that I put into what I'm doing as the coordinator versus uh, a conversation that I had with Brett recently when he suggested that I consider what's the real amount of time of administrative support that potentially could be needed going forward. And um, he suggested that I put together an approximate 
cost of different factors for what might be a realistic budget. Now, obviously this is a huge difference um, compared to what the $2,000 total for the previous year. If you go down and follow it down to the bottom further, because this whole thing, when you put everything together is, is over $20,000. So when I looked at what I do and I looked at 10 hours a week approximately, and I'm sure in the end it will be within the next couple of months and maybe even during the next couple of months, especially with all of the pandemic work and the things that we've been talking about, um, I, I feel like I'm trying to validate this, which is true. <laughs> it's probably gonna be much more than 10 hours a week on the aggregate. And then with the other things that we're getting involved in in town and whether it's parks, whether it's streets, whether it's other grants, in the end, it's gonna involve much more than 10 hours a week. But I also know that the town can't absorb and residents are not necessarily, nor the FinCom, and I don't even know about the Board of Selectmen, would be willing to consider this for anything way above and beyond this right now. And that may take years to, to get to that point. And it may not even have to go beyond where the figures that I have here are. But I'm looking at the, the rate of, as I said, $30 per hour, um, which is for overall uh, coordinators throughout the Commonwealth in the work that, that is required, it's a lower rate than a lot of coordinators get for an hourly basis. And many of them certainly are larger towns or half time or full time. So I, I took from, from what I know of others to get this figure of $30 an hour as an approximation. I took the 10 hours as an approximation, although as I said, I think it'll be more than that. And I took the figure for administrative support separately because that when in doing the town spreadsheet, uh, that would be a separate line item and that would have to be done separately and the town would have to hire an administrative assistant. That would not necessarily be Justina, the person who I'm working with now, who does regular work with me, that could be anyone. So that would, that's somebody who would be paid through the town. Um, I budgeted that, as you can see there, figuring on roughly, I'm figuring four to five hours per week for that person. And they would probably be working, I'm assuming, uh, less pandemic out of town hall. The figure that I came up with for um, $1,000 for supplies, mailers, et cetera, um, I don't know what that will be. I don't think we have an exact figure. So I'm guesstimating that that's what it could be. Um, it could be less. The figure for training for the $1,500 for the coordinator is because there are specific types of training that I'm supposed to have, which I haven't had because of pandemic through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which come to about 1400 and change per year. Um, and those are training classes that I have to take through Mass Office of Disability and also through MCAD for certifications as, as an ADA coordinator in the Commonwealth um, in order to make to ensure that I understand everything that I'm doing and my responsibilities. The other training figure would be for you folks or whomever are the commission uh, members because there's trainings that you should be able to participate in and workshops you should be able to participate in that explain more and discuss whether it's CAM certification um, whether it's training on other ADA criteria or how to write ADA grants or uh, different or, or attend seminars, you know, could be something on how to build an accessible playground. Um, though that money should be there as well. I don't have an exact cost for specifics, but by the time I submit this to the Board of Selectmen to go to the FinCom in a couple of weeks, I will have a much better breakdown of these costs. This was, I just got this on Tuesday from Brett. Um, the, the budget request. So I was trying to come up with some rough figures. My validation for these figures as well is when I look at what other town um, employees are receiving for the hours that they put in and what's required of them, I feel that this is fair compensation for what's required of an ADA coordinator. Um, I could go into that further and give you my specific opinions, but I don't think that that's necessary right now on different departments and different uh, folks and what they receive and don't and whether I feel it's, feel it's fair compensation or not. I don't think that that's appropriate for this, com for this conversation, but I would like to get input from all of you. Um, some of you may feel it's too high. You may all feel it's too high, but um, I also know it's, it's more, more likely that we shoot for the moon and only get a half a moon. So, I'm open to conversation and potential change here. Anyone? Uh, Josh, could you go down further on this? Uh, I think there's more to this. 
I want to see what uh, he's referring to at the end. So while we're scrolling, I'll just um, comment. I don't think that this is an unreasonable ask in terms of the $30 an hour capped at 10 hours a week. That's really two hours a day. Um, and especially right now during the pandemic and who knows what else is going to come our way this year. Um, I, I feel like it's reasonable and, you know, especially since a reasonable accommodation for you is to have that administrative support and the town is responsible for that anyway. Um, I think, you know, I know we, I know our initial mailing is going to be around the thousand dollar mark anyway, just for that welcome mailing, um, introducing ourselves. Um, I'm not sure that maybe if we had to cut anywhere, I would propose that we cut the training for commission members for this year, um, just to be able to say, you know, like this is not necessary for this year. Maybe we can go for it in 2022. Or actually, so is this the this is this the is, this, this would be the FY twenty two budget. So, if this this does not, in terms of what I'm doing, this does not change anything that I'm getting now. I'm still bound by that hundred and unless there's a, a way. And Ken, as the liaison, can have this conversation with us. Unless there's a way to ask if through free cash or some other method. I know there may be a, a, a selections, not a selections meeting, a special town meeting maybe late February, March, early April for an increase until the town meeting. This doesn't affect anything otherwise until July. So everything, all the time that has to be expended and all the expense that I have with Justina. Um, now, again, this may not be Justina in the end. I'm just saying using her name for now um, because she may not want to be a town employee and that's fine. That's up to her. I haven't even discussed it. Um, but Right now, there's no formal increase until July unless we ask for a special circumstance that maybe Ken can discuss on how to do or not. Um, so there's there's no additional compensation technically between now and July 1st. Gotcha. I will, I will then still hold at, I think that this is more than reasonable. And if there is a place that we need to cut the $2,000 training for commission members this year uh, in 2022, I think is probably the place that I would want to see that cut come from. Okay, so regarding free cash, we can't pay salaries out of free cash that's raised and appropriate, appropriate. So we, we can't get funding for that for this fiscal year out of free cash. And, and Jonathan, you know, we got a lot of pushback from the uh, finance committee on this. When I went before the, and you also, when we went before the uh, townspeople at a special town meeting in, I believe it was October, 2019, just to get a salary for you, the finance committee did not recommend that you be given any stipend, if I remember correctly. I had recommended at that time uh, that you get paid two fifty a month um, for a year, which would be three thousand dollars. Figuring uh, ten hours a month, and this is all before we had a commission. All this when you weren't working, you, know, or you weren't as busy as you are uh, right now. And I reduced it to two thousand because we only had eight months left of the, of the fiscal year. And that would be two thousand dollars, two hundred fifty dollars a month. So, we convinced you and I convinced the townspeople to go for that. I think, I think what the exact figure was, but I told the taxpayers uh, that if you approve this, this is I don't know if it was fifty cents or sixty cents increase in your taxes per year. So it wasn't you know this is not a big budget item, but the finance committee we fought. Uh, tooth and nail with the finance committee because they didn't want to pay this at all. So when it came up for the uh, budget for fiscal year 2021, I asked, you asked, we asked that it be increased to $3,000 because it's a whole year. And they pushed back and it went before the townspeople and it became $2,000. So instead of getting paid two fifty dollars a month like you were before, you ended up getting hundreds <laughs> um, Yeah, even less. Uh, less a month. So we're going to get pushed back again. There's, there's no doubt in my mind they're going to give us a uh, pushback again. So we need to uh, be united on this. Whenever uh, the board of selectmen meets with the finance committee to go over the budget, you're also, you have the opportunity to be there. But I would also ask any other member of the uh, commission uh, to attend that meeting and, and explain and justify uh, 
why we need additional uh, monies. If you remember, uh, Jonathan, last night at the uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting, uh, the chairman, Brett, had mentioned that, you know, if you were seeking, say, uh, administrative assistance, I'm not saying we do that, uh, Jonathan, but if you were uh, one administrative assistant, say, for five hours a week, so make sure you put that in, in the budget. I would prefer, and I think the town would prefer, that we pay you the money and then you pay Justine the money rather than the town hiring somebody. I was, I, Ken, I'm going to stop you there only because in the conversation I had earlier today with Brett, um, we did have that conversation in, in general terms. Yeah. And he told me that the town could not do that and I would have to put it in as a separate line item. So that's why I've broken this out this way. Just FYI. Okay. I know, I know what we had talked about but I was told today that it could not go that way. But I mean, it's no different from, from what we're paying you right now because you're paying Justina out of your salary and you're, you're probably paying her more than what your salary is. So it's, it's kind of the same. They're not objecting to what you're doing that right now. So I don't know why there would be an uh, objection uh, to that. I, I hear what you're saying. I don't know yeah. Yeah. how else to respond. Sure, and the, and the second uh, uh, thing is when I propose it to the town, it was with the thought that you're working 10 hours a month, $25 uh, an hour for 10 hours. Uh, if you remember correctly, Mallory said that she would prefer that it be a stipend so that you, we don't nickel and dime you for, you know, this month you only work eight and a half hours and next month you work 11 hours. We'll just give you a regular stipend each month. So I, I think I would prefer that. Obviously, we got to increase uh, that figure, uh, but I think I would prefer that. And you can use what you... Uh, what we have in front of us right now to explain to the finance committee, the board of selectmen, townspeople, if necessary, uh, the hours that you're putting in every week, and they're definitely not the 10 hours a month that I that I initially thought you would be working before we had an ADA commission and before we had all this other uh, responsibility. So I'm not sure what the, I can't tell from this what the bottom line figure is. Uh, There's, that, there is a bottom line figure at the bottom. I, I don't see it, there, I mean, uh, at least not on this anyway. Okay, okay, I'm seeing something now, yep. Uh, so you're proposing 24,000, training for the coordinator, $1,500. And as uh, we've talked about that before, it's probably a good idea that, you know, obviously you should get right. the, the, the sums for that. I do agree with Jen that if we had to cut anything, I think we're gonna go forward with this, to be quite frank, uh, but if we have to cut anything, it would be the training for the commission, member of $2,000. Uh, printing office supplies and mailing a thousand dollars that may end up being reduced because we're not going to have the mailing. And I think Jen just mentioned a figure of a thousand dollars, it's going to be most more closer to two thousand dollars because of all the mailings and the printing that we're going to have. But I think next year we may not have that much of an expense, uh, but we may have to have a mailing. And uh, and we may not that mailer, the mailer that we're talking about would be this year from. Right. You know, a different source. So it may be that that could be that can be reduced from a thousand down to two fifty, for example, or something. Yeah. So um, uh, I'd be interested in hearing what other people. Uh, so I'd like to hear other comments too. Be that's. I feel awkward. I have to let everybody know. I really do. Um, but I also know it's what I have to do. So, um, I'd like to hear from others. Kevin, Jocelyn, Nicole. All right. Um, I I agree with Ken on the fact that it should be a stipend because. You're not going to, like, as somebody that manages employees, you're not going to town hall every day, clocking in, clocking out. So it's impossible to, like, track your hours. And that's always going to be kind of like a red tape, I think, um, as far as, like, oh, are you really doing this many hours this week? Or, or even just from a, a clerical standpoint of it, like Ken was saying, is it eight hours this week, 10 hours this week? So I think, it, you know, just create it as, like, a, a salary, quote, unquote, Um on that end of it, as far as like getting these funds, I mean, I think most of us were at the special town meeting. If you have traction in the room at the time, the people of the town are going to vote yes on it. It's just getting up and saying the right thing to get it approved. So I, I, I think we might get pushback from like the finance committee, but at the end of the day, if we can get the townspeople to approve it, and that, that's the thing. It was probably a big, you know, to do when you guys first brought it up because I don't think anybody really knew that this was even a thing or that your position, I know I didn't know your posi position existed. Um, 
so now that especially like if we do the mailing that kind of gets word out and I, I don't think this is going to be an issue and i don't think that's an unreasonable amount by any means for the amount of work that you're doing um jocelyn or nicole i um i'm because and this is i don't know if this is a silly hr type thing I don't know if being a coordinator with that kind of a title, if, um, or the kind of money you're asking at that amount is, um, stipend is the right word, but I like when Kevin said salary, that that might be the way to frame it. And I agree, you shouldn't be nickeled and dime. I think you should think of it like a stipend but I think when you're, and I know I'm just, I'm, I usually tend to dig in details that you don't need to think of, but I agree with every what everyone has said. I think that when the postcard goes out to every household in town, they will know that you exist and that will be a more compelling argument for paying you and, um, you know, people will be more aware that this is, this is a thing in town and there's work involved and, um, you know, the things at town meeting that seem to cause the most debate are like the smallest things or library things. But, um, I, I think that um you know I, I the worst they can do is talk you down so it's worth the ask nicole um i don't really know anything about this type of thing to be quite honest um i don't have anything really to base this off of to me looking at this personally i think it's reasonable um like i said i don't really have anything to base it off of um i liked the idea if there was an issue um the commission member maybe taking that away. I don't know anything about any of that training, but um, if like one of us could go to one, we could teach the others. We could figure out some kind of way to maybe still do that and not have that funds. Um, but I mean, this seems reasonable. And as we go along and there's more and more steam coming from this committee, I think others will probably feel the same or at least I would hope so. So let me, let me, um, can I add something real quick before sure. you no, go ahead. rebut? Um, I guess my best suggestion, Jonathan, for you to come up with an act, like a more accurate number for yourself, because I mean, not that this is inaccurate, um, but I would go back to, um, whatever town article it's like, I can't, I don't even know what it's called, but that shows what you know, salaries are throughout the town for different positions and try to pick something that's comparable to what you're doing from a time frame standpoint. And, you know, if, or something that's relative in, in the style and the type of work that you're doing, that way you can say, well, you're paying, you know, this position that amount. And I feel like I'm doing comparable, a comparable amount of work in a comparable amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it, that it's only fair that I be, compensated in the same way i think that you have to kind of tie a little bit of that in there it just makes it a little bit more uh compelling argument for you i agree with kevin and i also you know you reminded me that you probably also want to show what other coordinators get you mentioned the other coordinator salaries yes you want to you want to um, argue that case as well. Absolutely. And so, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. But that would probably be helpful. And so let me a, a couple of couple of quick things just to, to think about too. Um, with regard to, to going to town hall, Kevin, um, you have a fair point there, and. The thought was before the pandemic, and then when they were doing some construction upstairs that I believe they're, they're doing, 
the thought was that I would spend a couple of hours a month, an hour a week, for example, at least at town hall in a, a space to make myself available to residents who needed to come in and wanted to have direct contact or conversation. Pandemic obviously has put a, a kibosh on that. The other problem is in order for me to work at town hall, physically work at town hall, it's not location, location, location. It's technology, technology, technology. So I would have to be able to work at town hall if I were using town equipment, that equipment is gonna to have to be licensed for the speech system for JAWS, for example. That JAWS speech, that's license that I have for three years is several hundred dollars because it's so proprietary. I use that for everything that I do. If I get a license for the town separately, the town's gonna to have to have that cost and then have a piece of equipment that they're gonna to have to put it in for me to use. So I have no objection to that. I'm happy to, to work from town hall if that's the way they want it, as opposed to here as you know, and, and get there. I can get there when I need to. So I'm not averse to that. I just want you to understand that's why I'm not at town hall. And those are the only reasons. Um, with regard to salaries for, and the work that other people in town do, um, how, what's the best way to say this? There are some, there are some folks that are, are paid to work 10, 15, 20 hours a week, yet they're and in with that 20 hours a week, for example, <clears throat> there's one or two board meetings a month. Sometimes there's no business to bring up or no meeting because there's no business, but there are folks still, they're still paid 20 hours a week. Yes, they have to be at their desk. They're physically there. And yes, they're answering phones and occasionally getting some papers put in front of them by residents, but they're still being paid for 20 hours a week. But that's why you would be a salaried employee. Exactly. exactly. I agree. Exactly. And well, if I, if I might, um, I would say a couple of things in this, and I'm not particularly clear on how this works at the municipal level, but in the corporate world and actually in the nonprofit world as well, you have exempt employees and you have non-exempt employees. If, if that's all that I'm it should work, Jen. Right. And that's, if all that I'm understanding about Jonathan's position, it would qualify as an exempt position, which means it's not, um, it not subject to overtime. Right. Correct. So having a salary of $300 a week, um, or, the $15,600 a year um, as a salary would not mean that you would have to submit timesheets because you would just do the work that is required of you at whatever time. And so some weeks that may be eight hours and some weeks that may be 12 or whatever the case is. Um, I do think that I have a lot of experience with writing up salary banding documents. So I do think we could do a compare Jonathan and, and put together a spreadsheet because to Kevin's point, while we can probably sway the town's folks um, at town meeting, if we you know have the right, it's probably in our best interest to get um, the finance committee to understand why the ask is what the ask is mm -hmm. and, and everything that goes into that. Um, so I think that if we take the time to kind of put this into a spreadsheet um, with some links out explaining why each line is what it is and what it's made up of, um, that could probably help us. If you're willing to put some time into helping me do that visually, that would be great. Um, I can do some research and give you some information. And if you're willing to do a little bit as well with me, I think we can put that together. I do want to say, and, and, and I hear what Ken said too. Um, when, when we first approached the town with the concept of even having an ADA coordinator and, and paying the coordinator anything, Ken is absolutely right. The town overall was averse to it. And we got pushed back even from a member of the Board of Selectmen who said, well, when I was the coordinator, we didn't pay anything. We didn't this, we didn't that. And that's true. The town was reactive as we've discussed before versus trying to be proactive now. And I think what, what people are hearing as Kevin said with, with different town meetings and even constantly at the Board of Selectmen's meetings and so forth, people are hearing we need to go through the ADA coordinator or the ADA commission. We need to make sure it's ADA compliant. We need to check this, we need to do that. So people are hearing the term ADA much, much more now than they ever did two and a half years ago, um, starting with, with, with Ken's um, you know, pushing ADA. Thank you very much, Ken. Um, and saying we, we need to address this and we need to, to do things. 
So you're right, Kevin. I think the more people hear it and the more people see it and the more people understand what's involved, whether it's pandemic, whether it's towards the playground or looking at the streets again, um, which is a conversation I had with Brett earlier about another grant they want to put in for that he called to ask some things about related to ADA. These are all the things that are done behind the scenes, but that are gonna really require a lot more with, with our studies and other things going on as well. And I do think that the town is gonna to be, become much more friendly to hearing the term ADA and acceptance of ADA. And I think I also agree with the mailer. Once the mailer goes out, we're gonna get a lot more ask. Um, I think to add to that, Jonathan too, I just did a very cursory Google search and organizations and businesses can be fined up to $75,000 for their first ADA violation. Absolutely. So I would say that asking $15,000 is not unreasonable. And I, you know, I hate to kind of put it that way, but sometimes the finance committee um, and other folks in town need to see. So this is like an upfront savings, right? This is the, 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 what do they call it? Like a, a, a penny saved is a penny earned, right? You yeah. see, you're, you're doing this now up front rather than being reactive. If we have to pay for a lawsuit and pay for representation as a town, it's going to cost us a lot more than what it would in the salary we're putting, we, we're putting together here. If you do another quick Google search and you look at the city of Taunton, the city of Taunton was sued exactly what you're making reference to. They were sued because a resident filed a single complaint initially. And within a short amount of time, the city of Taunton, granted they're much larger than we are, but they were forced to spend millions of dollars to, in order to bring themselves, you know, and they're still not current yet. They're still gonna spend millions more. And that's because of a lawsuit. We didn't have, my argument again, I guess going along with that would be, we didn't even have the study that was done by KMA of what the town needs until again, with Ken's you know, impetus to start ADA. Um, and then eventually for me to convince Mallory that we should apply for this grant, we didn't have anything at all. Now we have the grant, we got that approved. Now we're starting to put things in place. So we're doing the things in terms of what you're saying, we're beginning to do the things so that if anybody wanted to file suit with the town, we're showing we are proactive. These are the steps we're taking. We've done this, this, this. Yes, there's small things so far, but we're taking the steps that we need. We're putting together a five to 10 year plan. We have our, our scope of, of what needs to be done. You know, that to me accounts for something. I don't need to sell you guys, but that's what I feel like I'm doing. Jonathan, uh, um, you mentioned, are, do you, when you have to um, spend time at town hall, do you, will you have equipment there? I will have a laptop. That, I will have my laptop that talks that has Jaws built into it again through my own part of my own license because I have, I can use it on three separate devices. So I'll have my laptop, and I will have if I have to take information or give a person information, I will have an earpiece in one ear and be talking to the resident in the other ear. You know, at at a at a table or a desk or wherever there's private space. So Do I will you, have access, but it will be my own material that I'm going to be using. Is there, should you have an equipment line in the budget for anything that you do need? Um, or are you all set? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I thought about that, Jocelyn, but I have three licenses. The main thing is if they, if somebody said that I need to be based at town hall and working at town hall, then yes, I would have to say, okay, put that in there. But as long as we're doing what we're doing and people understand, I'm, you know, I know if I'm paid a salary, whether I work eight hours or 12 hours, you can, someone can say, who knows, I'm still happy to document what I'm doing. I have no problem with that. Um, just for the, if anybody were ever to come back and of course say, well, what do we know he's really doing? You know, I have no objection okay. to that. Um, I'm, I'm an open book. So if we're looking at equipment, um, one of usually the only invest, separate investment that a town or a company or business has to make for a person with a disability in the case of blindness, is the technology. Um, if I wanted to, for the, as a municipality, the municipality should pay for it. Um, the Commission for the Blind, normally if I were in the private sector, the State Commission for the Blind would provide the technology, but because it's through a municipality, the, the state says that the municipality has to pay for it. I'm not asking for that. Um, I'm not, if I were working full-time or 
I had to be at the town hall 20 to 30 hours a week, then yes, I would be asking for it as an accommodation. Okay. I just, I'm doing a budget too, so it's um, on my mind as well, you know. I hear you. Okay. So, uh, uh, Jonathan, I do yep. anticipate, anticipate you working at town hall occasionally, because we've just made that room, it's, it's not quite finished yet, but a room for town historian, ADA commissioner, other people that can use that that don't have their own space. So I think occasionally you're going to be going to, uh, to town hall and then in buying the equipment, maybe something we look at somewhere down the road. But if you can take your laptop, uh, that would be appropriate. But if you remember, uh, Jonathan, when we brought this to, to the finance committee, uh, I believe it was the chairman who uh, looked at surrounding towns and they weren't paying anywhere near, I, if I'm correct, as to what we, we were proposing at that time. So we have to be prepared for that. And, and you're right, there's a member of the board of uh, selectmen who in the past is now ADA coordinator, who we, she said the whole time I was ADA coordinator, I got two complaints. But that's not how we should look at it, as you know. We, we're not looking for complaints. We're, we're looking to be proactive to make the necessary changes to make the town, uh, to remove all the barriers for people with disabilities. And, that, and that's what our goal is. And I think we're showing now uh, how proactive we are. We're gonna have a battle. We may have a battle with a member of the uh, select board. Uh, it won't be me, obviously. And we may have a battle with the finance committee. I will still make whatever the recommendation if we, if we agree on a recommendation with the Finance Committee and we're all in agreement, that's fine. But if there is a disagreement, it goes back to the Board of Selectmen. We make our recommendations to the townspeople. And even if the, the Select Board doesn't agree with the recommendation for the budget, I still will advocate for the budget that we all agree is reasonable for the uh, Commission on Disability. So uh, it, because we have that grant of $30,000, which is two years of your potential salary uh, that you worked with uh, Mallory on to, uh, to help the town. Just getting that grant to look at our bills and see what needs to be fixed helps us from being sued by anybody because we're showing that we, we wanna see what the, where the problems are and we're gonna fix them. We don't fix them all of it today, but we have plans and this is, you know, we're gonna have a five year plan. We're gonna have some kind of a plan as to how we're gonna uh, fix different uh, things in town. And just a, a side note, when I worked for the courts, I worked at the old courthouse on 15 Court Street for 25 years. I loved the building. It was built in 1826. I love old buildings. However, there was an attorney, correctly so, uh, sued the state, actually it was the county, because the county owned the building at the time, uh, because he had a several policy and he had to work with our crutches. We had no elevator. There was no ramp to get into the building. And we ended up, uh, after 25 years, closing that building down, moving to a building that uh, there wasn't that problem. It was an elevator. People could walk in without uh, going upstairs. And the uh, state ended up uh, building a new courthouse in 2011 uh, that was over $8 million. So there is, as much as I like the old courthouse, it was not ADA compliant in many, for many reasons. And uh, it can get very costly when when uh, towns or states uh, are being sued. So we wanna be proactive. We don't wanna think about lawsuits because we wanna just, we wanna remove the barriers. So we're not, uh, we're not doing this to prevent us from being sued. We wanna remove the barriers. And uh, that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Uh, you know, we meet once a month, maybe uh, twice a month, sometimes maybe three times a month, but you're doing all the work in the meantime, between our meetings, you're doing all the work. So I, I think that it's appropriate I, I don't think the town is going to pay. I know Brett mentioned it last night, and maybe he can uh, give a good argument to the select board and the finance committee about uh, hiring an assistant uh, for you. And I don't, don't think it would be Justina, which is not quite right because she's been uh, helping you right along. I would prefer that it come out of your uh, salary, even if it means we have to increase the, the salary rather than uh, paying an individual because as you know, uh, with Justina, those hours vary. It may be two hours this week, it may be eight hours next week. And there aren't that many people who, who are going to want to do that. And it, the other thing is we, we have unions in town. So there may be somebody uh, in town uh, who works 20 hours a week, 15 hours a week, 25 hours a week that would want the five hours. And if that's, if that's a possibility, then that's fine too. But they would be working. You would have to go to the 
uh, town hall for them to work for you, they wouldn't be going to your home like Justina goes to your home. That's correct. I believe, right. I believe she goes to your home. I should say. Right now, um, Justina and I, of course, because of the pandemic, for example, don't, you know, yeah. we, we do get together occasionally and work together because we have to, um, you know, for the regular work that we do. And when we do it, we're in the same room, but we're on separate sides of the room, yeah. whether it's at her home or my home. So we have no choice about that sometimes. But having said that, the work that she does Somebody else could do, Ken. Somebody else could learn how to use Dropbox with me and do the way things that I do so that we can communicate so that I can do it in speech. They can learn to, to do doc version versus PDF. They, somebody else can learn that. So, you know, yes, it would be a little bit of a curve, but if, if it were somebody else and not just Dina, they could learn how to, how to do it. I'm not too worried about that, that part of it per se. Um, the other thing that I think about, and, and I don't, Again, I feel uncomfortable here, but I'll give an example. Um, and it's not deliberately, it's just to use as an example. When the veterans agent who is very important to our town and absolutely necessary to our town has approximately 400 potential constituents, I think about 425 yep. who are residents of, who are veterans. Some of those folks do require significant needs and services. And some of them require doing paperwork for various things. He puts his time in and he should. and. Mr. Hershey's very, very good at what he does. Having said that, we have the potential, you know, if you look at the way figures go in general, there could be up to 1,700 residents in the town who, quote, have a disability, unquote. Now, we may only deal with a small amount of them on a regular basis, and I think once word gets out, we will have certain ones that we're, we're, we're supporting one way or another on a regular basis. But 1,700 versus 4,000, 20 hours versus 10 hours. I don't know how else to put that. Plus, and, plus he has an assistant. Yes, he has an assistant as he, well. He assistant with the billing commission, but he has an assistant. Yes, he does. Um, so that, that person is paid both ways. You have, for example, I think it's the, um, oh gosh, the, um, who's the person? Mr. Mello, I think his name is. Um, receives, a, receives a figure as a, as a as secretary or, or administrative support uh, for, for another uh, part of town. So there's not precedent for doing this, but I think what I'm, what I'm trying to suggest is that for what potentially is involved, I think this is fair. Um, and I really thought about it because as I said, and I know we've had a lot of conversation about this today, I feel uncomfortable even having this conversation. Um, and I probably shouldn't, but <laughs> you know. No, Anybody? I would say, and this will be my last note on this, um, <clears throat> really you should not feel uncomfortable with this ask. Um, I think that it's more than covers, it is more than a reasonable ask is what I would say at this time. And it, it shows your willingness to be incremental um, as the duties and responsibilities are increasing. And, and to Ken's point, no, we don't wanna say avoid litigation, but Honestly, if we don't have somebody who is focused, there's a saying, you know, if it's everybody's responsibility, it's nobody's responsibility. The reason why we have an ADA coordinator is so that someone specifically has an eye, eye on any potential ADA violations that we might have as a town and that proactively we are taking care of them. And that is an investment in our future. And I think that that's the way that we should pose it to both the select board and to our finance committee and ultimately to the townspeople. And I think, Jen, to a little bit to, to support what you're saying a little bit too, you know, if we had one complaint from a resident to the state mm -hmm. or to a federal agency and we had to bring in legal counsel and bring in town's legal counsel or, or legal counsel from another law firm that specializes in ADA compliance because uh, our town counsel's office may not do that, that's going to be prohibitively expensive in its own right. And the town's going to have to find the money for that. You know, part of my responsibility is to try and avoid that. And I'm just echoing what you're saying. So you need a vote tonight? Um, if we want to think about it and reconvene, that's up to you folks. But I do need to put together my budget sheet and have it submitted to Brett by the 31st. Um, I will break this down further. And as long as I, we're working with these approximate figures, and in the meantime, um, I could have a conversation with Jen, you and I could set up a time or two to talk about how we're going to set up a, a spreadsheet of, I'm going to call it validation with the budget, um, to go along with it. 
And then um, I would be meeting with, is it the Board of Selectmen, Ken, in February? I, yeah, I believe you're going to sit down with Brett for us, go over the budget, then it'll go to the Board of Selectmen, then it goes to the Finance Committee, then it comes back to the Board of Selectmen. And many times we agree with the uh, recommendations of the uh, Finance Committee, um, but obviously if they're not agreement with this, I can't speak to the other members, but I won't be uh, supporting you. But yes, I hear you. We will be meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we hopefully will have a town administrator by February, uh, sometime in February. In that person will be more active uh, with the budget than uh, what Brett is doing right now. Brett's, Brett's our acting town administrator with right. our salary. And, uh, but the town administrator is usually the one that goes over the budgets, kind of talks to, we'll be talking to you. Right now it's going to be Brett. And then uh, she'll be presenting it to the town. And, and we would we normally ask the different departments if they have a, uh, any concerns to come in and meet with us when we're going over the, uh, the budget. So. I would ask that you, obviously you come, and I think you've done in the past. And I would also ask that the commission members, uh, obviously Jocelyn can't uh, speak on it if we give her permission because she's not a, but she's a commission member, but she's not a uh, town resident. She can't talk at the uh, town meeting unless we give her permission, which I would obviously. Uh, but no, I, I would want the support. So I, if we're gonna meet in a couple of weeks, again, uh, I, I would suggest we hold off on voting on this and come up with the final figures. So we're all on the same page, and uh, that way we can have the budget all uh, put together. So we're probably I, not I, because there is some, a little bit of disagreement. Uh, so, and I think Jen, if if you're willing to work with me a little bit in the meantime, um, as you offered to help put together absolutely, this spreadsheet yeah, let's get it into a budget moment. document, and yeah. um, <clears throat> we'll make and it I'll, dynamic and make and it presentable and. I'm happy to help. Okay, thank you. And I can forward you the budget document I have from the town so you have. Awesome, yeah, that's even better. At. Okay, so that you know exactly what we're looking at. Um, anybody else wanna have any conversation with this before we move on then? And thank you one all for real, all the time, go ahead. Real quick question. Ken, yeah. at the end of the day, it's the, it's the citizens of the town who have the final say in whether or not this would get approved at a meeting, right? Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's, it's the residents, and uh, Jonathan knows very well that we've had to uh, present this budget more than with the finance committee, and I, I think maybe even the uh, select board, uh, we had to ask for an increase, and the townspeople did support it. I spoke first, Jonathan spoke sec second. I don't know if anybody else, I don't remember, Jonathan, if anybody else um, spoke, uh, but you put, your, you put your best foot forward, and you present it the best you can. And the townspeople, they are reasonable. But somebody said, I'm not sure if it was Jocelyn, but somebody says they seem to worry about uh, the small stuff. I remember now a discussion on a $40,000 boat for the uh, Harbor Master, and it went on forever. Town ended up uh, passing it, but they, they worry sometimes about the small stuff. And then we pass $20 million budget, nobody's <laughs> batting an eye. So uh, the, the townspeople have the final say on virtually anything. So so these forest weapon can't say, okay, this is gonna be the budget for the uh, commission. It's the townspeople that have the final say and even the finance committee, people, the townspeople do listen to the finance committee. So that's why there was a lot of uh, some pushback and I was concerned about them not re recommending it. It's always best if they can recommend it. So whatever we go, go for, if they ask, if they say, okay, we're gonna agree that some of this, we're gonna go a little less, blah, blah, blah. We may seriously think about agreeing to that. But this is going to be such an increase from what it was before. I don't think we're going to get to that point. I think they're going to say, no, we want to keep it the way it is. And we're going to end up fighting for, um, uh, for the whole budget. So we'll see how it goes. And go ahead. I thought somebody was going to say something. Um, I can, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think when we first uh, went in front of the town, um, you said what you had to say. I said what I had to say. The FinCom was against it. There was a board of selecting member against it. I think there was another member of the of the public who stood up against it. But I think for the most part, I think when it passed and it was the vast majority of residents who were present. Yes. Voted in the affirmative. So Kevin, to what you're asking to at town meeting, I think if the case is made to residents, there may be legitimate discussion and it should be had. But I think if if the case is made and residents understand it. I think residents are 
you know, they vote in the affirmative if they really feel it's a, it's it's a legitimate need for the town, and the argument can be made. Oh, absolutely, because I mean, we've approved uh, <laughs> far uh, less important things, so put it yeah. as simply as possible. So that's the thing. It's every it's all about traction. So I, I don't I don't think. I guess it, like Ken was saying, the best case scenario is obviously you want to make your case with the FinCom, but if for some reason they just don't want to hear it, I wouldn't be overly concerned because there's avenues to take to get it passed anyway. So, but I, I like where you're at. I think we should, I think, I think we could probably all agree that we should, uh, we can vote on this if you want to, you know, just kind of keep it moving and, and get the ball rolling with the select board. I'm going to leave it to the, I mean, if, if everyone thinks that we should have another meeting and we may need to have another meeting later at the end of the month um, around some of the other issues anyway. So we can either vote on it tonight or we can hold off until, you know, two weeks from now or so. I'm happy to hold off if that's what everyone would prefer. And it's well, we can like hold off just simply if, if I'd rather make, because it seems like you were really trying to get on this and, and get it going. I think the only reason why I would say to hold off is if it, if time isn't that pressing and we're going to have another meeting, I'd rather have you re really review it well, go through the things that we discussed tonight, and then come up with a final you know number um, based on the conversations we've had. Like All just right. kind of go over it with a fine tooth comb and make sure this is exactly where you want to be because it's a one shot deal. So why don't we hold off for two weeks um, because we're going to have a couple of things that we do need to review anyway including the KMA contract and so forth as well, uh, final contract and stuff so that we can present that to the Board of Selectmen. So, um, and I'd rather have you all see what visually looks like the way it's gonna be presented, not only to, to Brett, but then eventually to the Board of Selectmen. Um, and that's what Jen would be putting together with me. So I'm happy um, to work with Jen to put this together for, for, for two weeks from now or so. I'm in agreement with that. And everyone else is okay with that? Just before we move on? Yes. Yes. That sounds good. All right, great. So we're gonna meet on the 28th? Yeah, if that works for everybody, we can just set that now, same time, same place. Yep, uh, at five o'clock. Which is a Thursday. Yep. Okay. Let me just check quick. You're gonna kill me, but I have a hair appointment that day. I might have some pull and swing with my hairdresser to be able to reschedule though. Gonna have no <laughs> you sure that you sure we can do we need to change the time a little bit for you potentially let, let me reach out to her let's schedule it for the 28th at um five o'clock and i'll reach out to her see what i can do to move okay. it one of us could do your hair for you if it'll help oh i would appreciate that I'm you, don't want, you don't really, want it to be really me though good at, at color how much do you charge free free nice all right well and i'm i'm good at shaping things and you know i can <laughs> cut around the ears i know i can feel the ears and know where i'm going <laughs> we can just drop the bowl on the head right like there you, there you go mom used to do <laughs> yes my father used to do yeah so um okay jonathan maybe we should talk about a couple of things that happened at the select uh selectors meeting uh last night uh that the bylaws i think we have to send the bylaws to the bylaw review committee is that what they said or we have to i know the town's yes and that that's on the agenda here too yeah. so we're just jumping around but you're yeah. right then keep going go ahead yeah. And uh, what was the other thing that uh, we, since we've changed the name of the commission, it used to be the ADA commission, now it's the Commission on Disability, the Board of Selectmen was approved that uh, name change. So we're gonna bring it to the Board of Selectmen, maybe the same night we do the budget, whatever, uh, that we've changed our, our, our name. So before that mailer goes out, the Board of Selectmen gonna approve the change in the name because it says Commission on Disability. Yes. We, want, we don't want the ADA commission then changing to Commission on Disability. We want it to everything going forward to the Commission on Disability. So that Correct. was brought to the, uh, the board of selection. And the town did inform us, as Ken said, apparently the town has a bylaw committee. Now, if, if everyone remembers in the outline for the, the, the bylaws, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, Jocelyn, I forgot to, to ask you to stop that. Thank you for doing it. Um, in, in the town's in the, in the bylaws that we have in the recommendation from the state, it says that the bylaws should be approved by the, you know, the Board of Selectmen or, you know, City Council, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't say anything about a town's bylaw committee, which apparently I wasn't aware we had. 
And what I was told last night is that we have a bylaw committee. And Ken, you are on that committee, am I right? No, I'm not on that committee, but the, the bylaw committee we have now, they're reviewing our current bylaws. The bylaws for the Commission on Disability, they haven't been approved by anybody. So there was a question last night, if you remember, Jonathan, whether or not they have to actually look at it or do we just bring it to the town. But if you have uh, some information um, that says that the select board uh, can approve it, that the select board should approve it or disapprove it, I would rather go that route than to spend more time at the town, unless we want to use the bylaws as an example of all the work that the commission does and, and you do. Well, we do. Well, we can, we, we can use it as an example anyway, but regardless, I think in the, and I'll have to go back and check tonight actually, but I think in the, the prep docs for doing the bylaws, um, there was language from MOD that specifically referred to it being, you know, approved by local board of select or city councils. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I remember that because I was going through it as I was doing the edits and that is what it said. And I thought our, our bylaw committee in town was for town bylaws, not for committee bylaws. It, Ken, are you saying that they review the bylaws for all different committees and commissions? I think, and I think they're, they're able to review any bylaws that any committee or the town has. You're, you're right though, they're, they're reviewing right now the town bylaws. Uh, but if any uh, committee, a lot of committees don't have bylaws by the way. Uh, but uh, so I'm not sure if they would be reviewing our bylaws. Right. And we have to have a bylaw. We're bound by the state to have bylaws. And we should, quite frankly, we should. So um, I'm going to go back and find that language again, Ken, um, which I know is in there. And I will cut and paste that page into a Word doc and have that put on for the next Board of Selectmen's meeting. I don't know any other way to do it. Yeah. Um, that shows that this is their recommendation that it be approved by a Board of Selectmen. And then it's going to be up to the BOS to tell us whether or not we should still need to go back to the bylaw committee. Yeah. If that makes sense to everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and was there something else you were going to say that was brought up, Ken, at the meeting? So that I think that was uh, that was it. I think. So. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm going to jump back to committee reports a little bit because we've gotten away from yep. any of the committee work in the past. Jonathan, I'm sorry. Before you move on, yep. I just found the uh, PDF on the um, on the. Drop, uh, what is it called? Yeah. Dropbox. Right. Um, do you want me to go ahead and just forward that by email to Ken? Is that helpful for you? Sure. You mean the whole, the entire document or just that one component of it? Uh, it's a PDF, so I could um, download it and just like circle or comment on the section. So to, to call your attention to it, Ken, if that's helpful. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you might want to forward it to each of the members if you, it's up, it's up to you so that everyone sure. has I can, it. Right I can just include Instead everybody on the email. Absolutely. Search for it to all of us that way. Nobody has to search for it and it's there. Thank you. Um, I like this multitasking stuff. I wish I could do it so easily. <laughs> um, so the next thing then is gonna be for the committee reports. And I started to say, I know we've kind of gotten away from any of the subcommittee reports um, with everything going on in the last couple of months. So um, I'll start with the, if anybody doesn't mind, and Kevin, I'm assuming with everything else going on, you haven't had a chance to reach back out to Jim yet. Um, no, I have not. And actually, I think I, the only thing I have to do is um, make a, make that drawing, which um, will probably take me like an hour. Yep. Um, so I'll get on that over the weekend. And uh, I think that's the final thing that we need, right? I think we, and we also needed a letter from him indicating that he is the facilities manager, but he is not, he is the facilities manager and represents the owner of the property, which is the town of Dighton. Oh, I didn't think we needed an actual. Oh, all right. Well, we actually I'll, have I'll to have that. that. I didn't know we needed an actual letter. I thought. Yeah, we that actually nope. listed him as the. No, we actually have to have a document that says that. He's just something on letterhead that says, you know, I'm as the facilities manager. I, as the buildings inspector, city, whatever, you know, kind of thing. All right. So I'll yeah. I'll shoot him an email. I don't know if we'll hear back to him until Monday because they'll okay. be closed tomorrow. But I'll get That's on fine. that. Cool. And if you could just CC it to me so I can keep it for our posterity records too. Um, okay. Well, I can, I'll put it in the Dropbox too. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Monday's Thank a you. holiday, so you may not hear from him until Tuesday. Until Tuesday, yeah. Okay, then if, it's, if, it, if it's there, I do have a folder in Dropbox called Correspondence now, um, and there's one for incoming and one for outgoing. Are the subfolders? 
And in the outgoing so far, what anybody would see if you look at it is the letter that I sent to the Board of Selectmen or the memo, I should say, asking you know for the um, pandemic committee and the, and the emergency preparedness committee. So um, that's where you can, if you can put it in that correspondence folder in the outgoing, that would be great. Okay, will do. Okay. And um, I have also, in, in the case for Kevin and I, for the um, playground committee, I have reached out to uh, Mr. Rhymes and Mr. Rosa both via email, um, asking them to please get back to me by early next week to put together um, a Zoom meeting so that the four of us can begin to discuss and plan what we want to do proceeding forward. And hopefully we'll hear back from Mr. Rosa. I know we'll hear back from Mr. Rhymes and hopefully Mr. Rosa as well. So um, that's where that stands so far. Um, I'm assuming no work has been done on anything related to policy yet because of everything that's been going on? Not yet. <laughs> All right. Um, we do have a policy folder at some point um, in Dropbox. If it makes sense, I think if it makes sense, I don't know when you can find time, um, Jan and I think Jocelyn too, to um, look at any of the policy stuff to make sure it has the language that would be there to make sure that everybody's included in each of the policies for people with different disability, or it has language that says what's what the policy can um, be made available to, whether it's different formats and so forth, that language has to be in all of them too. Um, if that's something that the two of you need me to work on with you, we can set up a time to do that. And we can start reviewing together or I can review some of these and then send them to the two of you to work on. Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I can start setting aside time on a weekly basis to just look at a few at a time. Um, it's just been a little bit of a crazy time of year. No, that's I okay. That's all right. Um, and I want to guess that probably nothing has that language on it. I would bet not either, Jocelyn. And I think that's one of the things that, especially with the new policy book that's come out in the town, um, we need to look at all of these policies and make sure it has the right language in there on each of them. Um, I'm almost wondering if it just makes sense for us to just say, this is what you should do. <laughs> to be honest, I, I can't imagine anything has it. I, I just- Ken, do you know through the through the boss if the language is in there yet? Well, you wanna repeat that please? Do you know if all of the different, the new policies in the town for all the different policies and procedures in the town that the town has established in that new policy book that was put together? Yes. If all of the policies have language that pertain to ADA and accessibility and accommodation and so forth? I, I don't believe so. I haven't, uh, Jim, okay. were, you, were you able to get a copy of that? I um, just got a copy last week, so I haven't really looked at it yet. Jim, you, and you it, get a copy? there's actually a copy now in our, in our folders. There's, again, in our Dropbox folders, there is a copy now. Oh, Are we oh, speaking okay. about the new handbook that- the policy handbook, yeah. yes. Okay. Yep. And that, you shared a link, didn't you? So that isn't that like public knowledge? Yes. Okay. I was on that committee too. And um, we never once talked about accessibility, you know, having that. Not that it means um, Mallory wouldn't have put it in there, but I don't recall ever seeing it. That's something that, for example, um, you know, we talked about earlier in terms of potential soup. And as, as far as we were talking about that other matter earlier, all of these policies have to have language in there if it pertains to anything related to disability that um, allows for access or allows for resource or allows for um, if somebody needs different types of assistant, assistance, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I believe, as I said now in Dropbox, I have the whole policy there, all the different policies. So, um, Jen, I can start to look at that with you and, and Jocelyn, because you were involved before, maybe um, if, we, if we look at some things and go back and forth, that's okay with the two of you. Or if I find things with language, I can, I can as a subcommittee, share it with the two of you. Yes. Yeah, that works. Okay. There is one paragraph that I can see so far. Uh, I'm sorry, what, Ken? 
there is one paragraph at the introduction of the policy handbook uh, that speaks to ADA uh, clients. We're looking at all the different policies. I don't see anything in there yet. Yeah, and it has to be in the policies, in the individual policies. Yeah. So, so I, I do want the um, the commission members know uh, that I didn't agree that we should be printing this book. I figured how much it costs us to print each book, and we printed up a, a few of them, not enough for all the committees and uh, employees. Uh, but it's very expensive to print this, and I was asking that it be digital, that we can have it on a computer and people can just look at it. It can be changed easily without having to print a whole new copy of it. Uh, so I, I don't remember. I don't know if we printed up 60 copies of it. I'm not sure exactly how many we printed up, but it ended up being uh, pretty expensive. But I, I did oppose the uh, spending that kind of money for it. So, well, I think, and I, I think, again, once it gets done because we're going to be making recommendations to go back to the board of selectmen for change in some of these um in accordance with what we're what we're charged to do and what the state expects us to do you know we can't force anything we can only make it as a recommendation and um it's going to be up to the board of selectmen whether or not they want to adopt um but once they do i think we can also post them on the town's website under the ada yep. banner Um, anybody else have any other thoughts about the policies or has anybody heard anything else, by the way, speaking of subcommittees, um, about the community garden recently, I have not heard anything and I did reach out, but I haven't heard anything back yet. I haven't heard anything. I, I do know that the, it's been surveyed. Obviously the bridge house is down. They were working at there uh, today, cleaning up, cutting down some of the trees. I think the agricultural commission is meeting next week and I'm not sure if it's under them. I know they initially talked about it, uh, so I'm not sure if it's under them, but uh, I know they were they, they had hoped to do some stuff in the winter. It's too cold now, so they won't be doing anything, but they may be doing some planning, which is where we have to be involved. So maybe uh, we should uh, invite them to one of our meetings. The Agricultural uh, Commission, you mean? Or or the, the folks who were doing the, the garden? Two individuals that Jenna, uh, I forget. Yeah, that. I'll send- Jenna Barr and Tanya Patricio. Yep. I'll send an email out to Tanya tonight or tomorrow um, and ask her for an update and ask her if we, um, if we can get an update as to where things stand as well. Cause I did send an email to her just before Christmas and I haven't heard anything back yet. So we should get an update before we involve them, you know, have them come to one of our meetings. Yep, and, that's- and Update, see what they're doing. They may not be joining for a few months. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, but we have to be on top of that. You're right. We need to uh, keep track of that. All right. Kevin, backing up to other other committees, um, open space. And we have a meeting the 20-whatever the, 20, whatever the think, last Monday of the month is. I think it's the 25th, uh, Kevin. 25th, yes. Thank you. But I'm glad and, somebody's keeping my schedule for me. So let me ask you, it's my understanding from what I heard at the, the selectmen's meeting that open space is planning to submit a plan for open space and recreational space. Yes. Um, I can actually put that documentation into our Dropbox too. Um, I have myself even being on that committee, I haven't read through the entire thing because I kind of came into that process late with them. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't a whole lot, I don't think, in it that's going to really affect us right this moment. Um, but some of it, um, there's some future planning. Like I know one item that they had talked about, and I'm not sure that it's essentially in that plan, is that uh, like a, they wanted to do a boardwalk at Broad Cove or plan or discuss doing a board, boardwalk at Broad Cove. But that everyone on that committee as plans progress is 100% on board with, you know, either doing a joint meeting with us to, to accept recommendations or even it might be a subcommittee at some point if needed or as yeah. needed. So when they, when their plan gets submitted for quote recreational space, unquote, do you know what that part of it's referring to? I don't off the top of my head. I can review that that plan and um, 
give yeah, you I mean, some if, more input. Like you said, if, if you could put it in Dropbox, and that way we can all take a look at it. Um, and I'll, I'll put it back for on the agenda for next time too. Okay. Um, because I just want to make sure that I'm hoping that if, when they're talking about recreational space, they're allowing for, you know, new playground space or, or re, you know, re, reinventing the wheel now for a playground space that's there. So that when it's reallocated, you know, for disability playground, um, that takes that into account. I just want to, I want to make sure that it does. I think okay. we all need to. So, Kevin, your meeting is next Monday, the 18th. The, the 18th? The holiday, yes, at 5 o'clock. I think it, it might have gotten moved. I really... Yeah, we just got a copy today of the uh, select board's uh, schedule, and that meeting was shown for the 18th. They may have changed it. Uh, yeah, because I think I originally had it for the 18th, and then I think we may have changed it to the 25th because of the holiday. But I can, um, yeah. I can fish through some emails and find it. Sure. I think a lot of that going on with that with that plan, too, has more to do with just um, certain areas remaining um, as is and not being reallocated as something different. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, I, we'll, I see what you're saying, and I guess we'll we'll see what they're proposing in the plan. Um, Staying with committees for a minute, a couple of questions for everyone. Does it make sense, two things. The first, does it make sense for the commission to have a seat at, and Ken, again, maybe as liaison, you can enlighten us. There's the newer committee in town focusing on facilities. Am I right about that? I don't know the name of it. Municipal Buildings Committee. Municipal Buildings Committee. Okay. Uh should we have a seat on that or ask to? I don't know enough, quite frankly, about that committee, so I, I can't uh, answer that correctly. So I, I sat in, not sat in, I watched that, uh, the replay on YouTube of that. As far as I know, they've had one meeting. They very briefly discussed uh, Chief McGee um, coming up, compiling a list of improvements at the fire station um and then they talked briefly about in their next meeting discussing potential um renovations and future sites for the library so i definitely think we need a seat at that table or at least be invited to join the meeting and, and give in some sort of input i don't know if we necessarily have to be like on that committee or but we should at least be aware that the meetings are happening so we can uh even if it's as, as for public input. Right. I agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm going to forget because I'm, I'm not taking notes where we're going right now. Um, Kevin, could you just shoot me a text or an email with the name of the, of, of the committee? So when I make my request, I know I don't, I at least I'm at 10% know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll text you right now. All right. Thank you. Um, and I think um, staying with committees for a minute, for the pandemic committee, as, as we noted earlier, um, we were uh, approved to have a seat at the table for the pandemic committee, and I'm going to reach out to Brett. Uh, Nicole, um, in your, in your um, expertise or position as a nurse as well, um, if, I, if, you are, if I'm invited or you are invited with me, would you be interested in being uh, a, a participant because you can help ad address specific medical potential needs for people with disability. Yes, much I'd, more than I I'd definitely be interested in that. All right. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to approach that with breath in and see if we can. Thank you for that taking happen. that on Nicole. Oh, thank you. That might, that might be more than you've bargained for, but. Um, I'm sure it will baby. That's okay. <laughs> you know, that's okay. I think it, it's all good. Nicole, when do I get my shot? <laughs> I don't know. We just started rolling them out this week. <laughs> it's very exciting. It is. Did you get yours? Uh, no, no, I'm not yet. Oh. oh. Um, the, um, individuals come first. <laughs> I, I hear you. Um, okay, the old, while we're here, while we're still doing this, we have the minutes from the 30th. Has anybody had a chance to view them? Jocelyn, they were amazing, by the way. <laughs> 
Really, I yeah. thought I was. I thought I was listening to a recitation that was really well done. You did a really great job, Jocelyn. Yeah. Thank Sorry. you. I had to listen to our voice, my, my voice. So yeah. <laughs> That's no, one of my okay. least favorite things is listening to my own voice recorded. Me too. <laughs> I I have not watched any select board meetings since I've been on the board because I don't like that. So I think I watched once because there was something, some concern that I had that somebody had. One of the select board members had said that one of the quote, the exact quote. Uh, but other than that, I don't, I don't watch them at all. <laughs> so has has most everyone had a chance to at least curse or give the the minutes a cursory review? Uh, yes. Enough so that people feel comfortable voting to approve or not approve the minutes from the thirtieth uh, of December. Yes. Are you entertaining motions? So I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 12 30 2020. I'll second that motion, Kevin. And we will do a roll call. Uh, we will exclude Ken as he is a visiting member. <laughs> um, liaison. Uh, we'll start with Kevin Smith. Aye. Jocelyn. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Jen. Aye. And Jonathan. Aye. Ayes have it unanimously, no abstentions. Thank you all very much for approving those minutes. Um, do we have other old business that people want to bring up or discuss? I'm sure there's something we're missing. Well, uh, regarding the mailer, uh, they were, if I remember correctly, the board was okay with the mailer, but now we're going to talk about how much it's going to cost. I think you're going to present something to our next meeting, Jonathan. Yes, I told the, the board of selectmen, um, as far as the mailer goes, and that we are, we're approximately asking for $1,500 for the mailer. Um, Jocelyn, I don't know if you can pull up the final version of the mailer or not while we're, while we're talking about this for a minute. I'm working on that. Okay. It's in the... Um, Me one second here. It was a, it was attached right to this. Uh, um, you sent out on Tuesday. This is in the COVID nineteen folder, and then it's final, in, under final the final draft mailer. Uh, it's in mailer drafts, and it's the final draft mailer. Yes. Okay. That's the absolute final one that we submitted. With the exception of the obviously we're commissioned on disability, but that's the final version of what it is, um, and that's what they've approved. The only question now, and um, I told them that we would uh, go back to them with their next meeting on the twenty seventh, with the exact final cost. So I have reached out uh -huh. to um, the postal service to get an an exact figure based on numbers, and I'm hopefully going to get that response back tomorrow. Um, we have a little over 3,000. I think it's 30, almost 3,200 residents, Kim. Ken, am I right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. I was looking for a final figure that the Postal Service could give me within, you know, $50 or so. And hopefully I'll have that tomorrow back from the post office. And then also I've reached out. I know the town has different printers that they've used, but I've also reached out uh, to Bristol Plymouth and uh, played phone tag with their printing department a couple of times to see what they would charge to do it. It might be a little less expensive and it might be interesting for the kids to participate and putting it together and doing the layout and so forth as well. So um, once we, when, if, if we go with that potentially, I'm gonna send this on to whomever so that we can have a final layout for all of us to review as well before it goes out. And, and, and yeah, Jen, I don't know if you screen shared it yet or not. I can't. Yeah, it's up there. Okay. So, um, Jonathan, it was also mentioned last night that we, you're going to check with the town this, because we can mail it out as a bulk mail. mail. Yes. I'm not yep. sure how much that's going to cost if it's any cheaper than the other thing that I was talking about. Yeah, bulk mail is definitely cheaper. The only question mark for bulk mail these days is how long it would take yeah. to get into some to get into a residence. Yeah. Um, you know, even if we mail it in our own local post office. Um, I think for bulk mail, it has to go up to Brockton first or something like that and come back. 
So that's really you're not cool. suggesting something would take longer than usual or get lost in the mail, are you? <laughs> no, we are. You know, we are a right to farm community. Just remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for my ballot for the election. <laughs> that was the one from 1960, right? Yes. Well, I wasn't able to vote in 1960, but at 72, I was. But anyway, <laughs> uh, our next, uh, Jonathan, we've changed our board of selectors meeting to the 25th, not the 27th. The All right. Good to know. Yep. Okay. Um, speaking of the board of selectors meeting, just so that everyone knows, and I, again, I had this conversation with Brett today. Um, we, the, the three people for the three candidates for the, um, the administrator's position for the town are going to be interviewed coming up in what about two weeks, Ken, or so. It's actually um, next week. Next week. And I there's two different funny. dates. One is at six and seven. The other one's at six. Yep. And um, when there's public input allowed, what I've suggested to Brett and he said we could do is I'm going to ask each of the candidates three questions. Now, the same questions have to be asked for each candidate, but I'm going to ask three specific questions to each of the three candidates with regard to ADA, just to get their, you can get a sense of their knowledge base. Um, and people who are listeners in the Board of Selectmen can get a sense of their knowledge base. And I'm doing that because I don't know what their knowledge base is. And um, the other night when the um, company who did the review of the candidates said that they had spoken to different department heads and different folks throughout town. Nobody contacted me, not that they have to, I'm not a department head, I don't mean it that way, but nobody contacted any of us as far as I know to ask potentially what should we be asking about ADA or what should we know? So my thought is to ask them three questions. I have three questions in mind, but if any of you have questions that you think we sh I should incorporate as one of the three questions, um, or maybe it's a different question than I would have. Um, feel free to send it to me. I'm going to send you all an email with the three questions I would ask anyway, and it just asks you to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. It's not a vote type; doesn't require a vote. Um, it's just you know maybe you have a different question, so you'll, I'll get that for me sometime over this weekend if that's okay. Hey, Jonathan, you made a valid point. Not to mention those questions now because this. Uh, this meeting can be put on YouTube. They can actually see the questions before they actually are interviewed. So it's important that we don't mention the questions now. And if we do have any questions or any member has a question, that they email it to you. And that's not public. And the, when we interview them, those meetings, they're going to be Zoom. They're going to be recorded, but they won't be uh, put on YouTube until all the interviews are over. So the, uh, the other candidates don't get to see what the questions are. So. Uh, I'm glad you're going to ask a question because I was going to ask a question along that same line. So I'm glad you're going to uh, handle that. So good. Okay, so I will, I will send um, my three questions out to each of you this weekend. And okay. again, um, if you want to reply either yay, nay, I would ask number one and not number two and three, ask this instead. But I did tell Brett I was going to have three questions. Now there's no follow-up or rebuttal to the questions that we want to ask. It's only a question and then their answer and we have to ask each of the candidates the same question. So, um, you know, that's the plan. And I do think it's important for any of us who can make it to, to those final interviews to, to be, you know, participants in the, in the process. So I would definitely in, in, encourage that. Um, so I can, I can tell you that when I interviewed um, candidates for different positions in uh, the state for my department, as well as when I was being interviewed, we did uh, behavior interviewing, which means we ask a question, for example, uh, well, I don't want to necessarily give an example, but you ask them a question of what what have you done, you know, do you believe in this or have you done this and could you give me an example of you doing this? Say, for example, have you dealt with a hostile uh, town employee and could you give me an example of how you handle it? So you, you don't let them say, oh yeah, I've done with, I've dealt with a hostile uh, in, town employee many times. You want them to give you an example. So by including that in the question, they're going to give you an example. They have to give an example of what uh, they're doing or what they've done regarding that, whatever that question is related to. So that's one way to, uh, since you can't have a follow-up question, uh, to try to get a bigger answer or a better answer out of them. I probably gave too much information out now already. Well, just to, to follow up, Ken, and give you an, an example of one of the questions that I was thinking of would be to ask the person specifically, yeah, you know, 
have you had a, have you had any contact with either the Mass Office of Disability or, and I would give them one other agency, um, please explain the type of contact you had and whether or not you have ever participated in writing or, or written yourself any grants in order to receive funding for anything related to disability services or resources. And that's important to know. Do they understand? Have they had any contact? So that's an example of a question I would ask. Okay. So again, um, I think if anybody has any thoughts on, on that when we get there, please um, let me know so that I can, and I'm, I can, I, do I submit, I don't have to submit these questions. Is that right? I can hold them off until the interview from what I understand from Brad. Yes. Okay. The next thing is the bylaws, but we've already discussed bylaws. So I'm gonna, um, gonna move on that because we already know that we need to, as, as Jen said, she found this section that talked about um, how, it, how it has to be reviewed and or, and or ratified, if you will. So um, we'll pass that information on to the Board of Selection. Um, pandem pandemic committee we've already discussed. So, you know, I appreciate everybody working with our informal order of taking things sometimes. Um, it makes it much easier, I hope for all of us. Um, emergency preparedness committee, again, I wanna get the language from the state. I know I'm repeating myself so that we can, we can, we can take care of that. Does anything, um, the KMA under new business now, going to new business, the KMA contract, um, I'm still going back and forth with Josh a little bit. We can pull it up. I did send it to all of you to review. So I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at it or not. It was one of the attachments, I believe. I did see that it was an attachment. I haven't had okay. enough time to, to read it thoroughly. Okay. We're, we're, this is still going to be, it's still in the edit version. Um, we're still in the final draft version because what it does not include right now is the potential for an elevator. Um, elevator financially would be a very big ticket item for the town. Um, if we do have an elevator, it has to be able to be potentially um, considered as to whether, I think I discussed last time, whether or not there would ever be another floor put on the building um, or not. And my hope is to get the elevator included in this engineering study. Um, we may have to give up something to get that in terms of the total amount of hours. Um, but I'm hopefully going to hear back from uh, Josh Safety tomorrow and um, have this for everybody to give a final thumbs up or thumbs down at our next meeting. So again, we could present to the Board of Selectmen. Um, I'd like to get, get them going if we can by the end of February. So Quick question on, on this, on the proposal. Yep. Are they actually providing a design or are they providing a suggestion of improvements that need to be made? No, they're going to come back with design documents that are permit oh, ready. Okay, that's why I was I was curious because I'm like, you know, for the price tag. Yeah, um, and, I didn't know how and, much and if, we were getting. No, and when you when you have a chance to take a look at it, um, and and I, again, I know you, Kevin, like right. the rest of us, have a crazy schedule, so it it is it, with what they would be giving us are design that are permit ready so that we can pull permit. I think yeah, I'm reading the the scope of services right. now. I see that now, and I think with. What, what they're offering to do, and this is potentially in lieu of the elevator, and this is where I still have to do some negotiating with them, is they're offering to actually work with the potential architects that we would have. If, they, if we you know, put it out to bid, they'll help us put it out to bid, determine whether the figures are correct or not, determine whether or not those contractors are fully qualified and they'll work with the contractors through the development stage. That's the add-on that they were offering here. And I think that they put the add-on there in lieu of the elevator potentially. And I do believe, I'm quite sure that there was conversation with Mallory and um, KMA about the elevator being part of the part of the initial contract. I know, Ken, you'll remember, I think that's the way we couch this. Yes. And at town meeting as well. And Kevin, you were there as well. Is that would, uh, I'm sorry, Justin, I forgot to say don't share. Again, thank you. Um, How do you know we ch she changed that, Jonathan? If you don't I was looking. What's that? I was looking at the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I get a I get alerts in my ear. Great, great. So the way Zoom is, is set up for people with disability is when somebody joins or leaves, I get a so and so has joined, so and so has left, so and so has this, so and so has that. So I get those alerts. Yeah. 
So uh, getting back to your initial question, it was my understanding as yours, and I'm sure Mallory brought the, as we've had conversations with Mallory about an elevator, a potential elevator, Mallory and I walked around the building, we talked about different spots for the elevator. We talked when we talked about this, uh, funding this or asking for this, I was always thinking that it was one of the conversations was going to be about an elevator and they were going to give us some plans. In fact, when we, um, when we talked, when I talked to the finance committee uh, about uh, going for this money for asking the taxpayers to pay for this, it was, uh, they wanted to know how much uh, Jim Aguirre was involved in it because they thought he was actually going to do more work. He's basically going to say, okay, you can put the elevator here, but you can't put it there. And I gave the example of the elevator uh, when I talked to them about that, that he's, that the building commissioner is not going to be coming up with plans or anything like that. He's basically going to say, you can't put it here because that's where the heating system is, whatever. Uh, but I specifically remember talking about the elevator many times. So I'm a little disappointed if it doesn't, if it's not part of this agreement. So I appreciate everything you're doing to try to get it to be part of. Well, uh, this was so we may, we may have to give to get because the, the component of them working with our architects, our potential architects and so forth, was not part of the original agreement. And I got them to agree to do all of that so that we can have them go from soup to nuts. But then I noticed when I was reviewing it at the end, they took out there specifically a line that says does not include the elevator. And I want the elevator back in there. Yes. I and agree. it's that simple. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, um, we'll, see, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you know, we have other projects down the road that we might want to call on the floor as well. So maybe that'll be some incentive for them. Yeah. We'll see what happens tomorrow after tomorrow or Monday after a conversation. Yeah. Um, but that's the, that's for the most part, that's the document that we would be presenting to the board of selectmen, obviously with the exception of the tweaks that I just talked about for everybody. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see too, what they come up with for an elevator in that building. And actually it's funny that Ken brought this up earlier is, I don't know if you've been back to 15 Court Street since you left, but it looks a little different than what it did back in the day. And I actually worked on all the uh, electrical and HVAC in that building. And part of that was the elevator. And the, the guy who developed that building has done several other buildings. And I feel like for them, the best bang for your buck is to do that external vestibule that harnesses the elevator because you're not changing any of the structure of the existing building you're simply just adding on to it and cutting doorways which is so much less expensive so it'll be interesting to see what kma comes up with for a suggestion there the only thing i don't know about the external vestibule is what's under it if it's just solid ground that they'd have to dig out yeah because it ends up being no. they just dig a pit yeah so as long as you don't have any you know water sewer utilities yeah, yeah. you're in the clear which obviously yeah. jim will clarify that yeah. for us yeah so, so um, that we'll we'll keep that where it is. Everybody, stay tuned, as they say. Yeah. Um, the engineering stu study for the parking lot. Um, there's no change on that right now. Um, it's my understanding, and I can through the boss. Maybe you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. But they're just at phase one of that right now, which is looking at the engineering study as how it might affect the wetland area. Um, they haven't even gotten to how the sidewalks would be yet, or the parking lot would be potentially you know looking at right now and how it would be lined how it would be curved or anything like that with ramps once they do we're all going to need to be involved in that i think um one way or another i think it's going to take the whole commission to make sure um that it meets the it's fully accessible uh for kids with wheelchairs and for parents for pickups and drop-offs and have us i think we're really going to have to lobby for that to make sure it's in there um because that may affect the ultimate cost as well so um, if anybody wants to keep that on their radar. Yeah, it was my understanding that they would, uh, deciding where the wetlands were in December, they had to have it done by the end of December because the person that the town hired for a conservation agent started January, I want to say January 2nd, but she was working for this company prior to that. So we had to give a special permission to say, okay, you can do it, even though it's a town project, you can work for them up until you start working for us. So. She, it was her job, she's a conservation agent, but she, while working for them, decided where all the wetlands were and letting them know so that parking lot and all that kind of stuff won't be in the wetlands. So they've completed that. Whether she's submitted the report yet, I'm not sure, but they completed that. So we're still a little ways from it, but they, I think it's gonna move quickly once they get things going. 
Um, one other thing that, and I didn't catch the meeting um, last night. Usually I go back and I'll re-listen to it on YouTube. But um, didn't Mr. Ferry from the highway department stop discussing the Main Street sidewalk project last night? Yes. So yeah. we want to make sure that's on our radar too, which he agreed at the special town meeting that he was going to consult with us before moving forward with any construction. But I want to make sure that, um, and I don't know if it can be any one of us or if it has to be Jonathan specifically reaches out to him um, to keep in touch on that project also. So, so what they're doing right now is um, the townspeople have had agreed to come up with the funds for the engineering of it, the road mm -hmm. sidewalks and so uh, he just kind of gave us a, a rundown as to what the, the plans are. But uh, quite frankly, I didn't address last night anything about ADA compliance regarding the sidewalks, but it's also the road itself. Right. I think we're a little ways from it because the uh, water district also has to replace the water lines on Main Street. They've been breaking, and that's a, that's a couple million dollars. So it, it's an expense. So we don't want to put the road in, and then a year later, they're, they're going in and putting the pipes the water lines uh, in. So I think we're a little ways from it, but the engineering is going to happen now. So we want to make sure that everything's in uh, compliance for the sidewalk specifically. And it's from, right. it's from Elm Street to William Street. That's what they're talking about. Oh, that's the portion that they're going to work on yes. first. The overall plan, though, is to go from Williams to 138 at some point, correct? At, at some point, yes. All right. Yeah, we definitely want to at least be able to take a look at the engineering plans because if they're not, if the engineering drawings don't show it or, or if that, um, you know, we don't want that road to encroach on people's property where that becomes an issue, but we got to make sure there's obviously enough room for the sidewalk. So it, we need to at least be able to, to view what they have planned, even if it's not going to happen for two years. Yeah. And there was, there was discussion last night, for example, of the Pleasant Street. I, I didn't hear everything we're saying completely because I was trying to, to find something in my ear. I couldn't, um, you know, there's talking about Pleasant Street potentially. I did get a call from uh, Brett this afternoon also with regard to an, a grant um, that Tom is working on um, that they want to submit by the end of February. So Brett and I are going to going to meet next week to talk about it so that we can we can flesh that out more in terms of uh, the language that we want to make it sound uh, you know, sound pretty, if you will, for what we're looking for, for accessibility for the sidewalk. I think one of the things that as a takeaway to, to this part of it is, I think in the future, what, I, what I've learned, and again, this is before we had a commission, is that we need to always be really proactive about not only the scope of what the work is that gets approved, but actually reviewing the work when it's fully completed. So I think, you know, the sidewalk that they did on Center Street. Um, and I think Kevin, you're aware of this. A lot of that sidewalk is not ADA compliant. Um, it goes around poles and areas where it's too thin. It has weaves and bobs in it and angles in it. And it shouldn't have been built the way it was. Um, but that's before we had a commission and before I really had any say in the process. Um, and, and we had any say. But I think going forward, we need we need to I would like to set up a time once the pandemic goes over, or even if I meet with you individually, where I can actually take, for example, the levelers out and show you guys all how they work and what you do and the angles that you have to look at. Um, that's a simple version of cam, of cam training, but it, then it's something that any of you can do at any time if there's something you're questioning in town. Um, and I have, the, I have the equipment, so I think it's worth doing. Now, as it as it pertains to these projects, is is it does it have to be you that reaches out to Mr. Ferry, or can like you, or is that something that like you, we would assign as a group, like say like I, like like, I, like for me, obviously, construction is kind of my my thing, so it's like it does is Kevin think, the you know I think the answer to the question and um, in terms of protocol. I think the answer, this is my opinion, and Ken, again, is a liaison and member of the boss, correct me, but I think because I'm, quote unquote, an employee of the town, I would reach out, and also um, as the co-chair of the commission, I would reach out to Mr. Perry, make the initial contact on something, and then ask him if he would work directly with you. Okay, that's that's all I, how I, I guess what I yeah. was asking for. Um, 
and then I would send and you an email. It's like, you know. I just think, and not to be like that about it, but, uh, and obviously we know it, it's going to be easier for me to understand looking at it than it is, than for him to explain it to you, right? Oh, I wouldn't then without being disrespectful. No, 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 you're not being disrespectful. And you're right. You're looking at drawings. You can see visually where things are and how they're marked. Um, you know, somebody can explain a drawing to me all day and that's great. And I know the rules and I know the laws and that's great, but you know what? I can't see how things are going to look until the finished product is there. And I go out with those little tools that I just talked about. Right. And, you know, mark it off and walk it off um, and do measurements with somebody who has vision. So until I've done that, I don't know. You're absolutely right. So yeah, it does. Well, that too. And I think this ties back into like what we were talking about earlier is about the amount of time you're going to put in. Um, I don't think that you're still going to, it will allow you to get more done if you lean on certain members of the committee more to do some of these things for you. That's why we're here. I know all of us are, you know, busy in our own lives, but I don't think it's unreasonable to say, Kevin, can you take an hour and go meet Mr. Ferry? You know, Jen, can you take an hour and do this? And so on and so forth. Because that, you know, they will help you become more productive if you lean on us more too. So keep that in mind as far as like, you know, your time like we're here for you or to help you no and i really know and i really appreciate it because um yeah i think if everybody can find a way to commit that little bit of extra time here and there for parts of this that are either need to be done or that are you know really important to you personally that would be great and i think one of the reasons for that kevin is because um you know once our mailer goes out if we get a lot of contact information from residents who have questions or needs or you know whatever it might be those are the things that unless the resident allows, I can't share, but those are the right. things that sometimes take the most time. So, you know, we can find out that it's, it's 15 to 20 hours a week of resident contact time, which leaves not a lot of time for other things because we've already used all our time. So, you know what I'm trying to say? Yep. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. I mean, um, and I'll, I'll have a little more time coming up. I got this one real pain customer over on Waterford Circle that I'm trying to wrap up some stuff for, but other than that. Oh, that would be Jen Diskowski, wouldn't it? <laughs> no. I wish I lived on Waterford Circle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you do good work, I have to say, in all seriousness. Really, I haven't gotten electrocuted yet and I've stuck my fingers in those sockets. I know, I tried to leave a couple plates off thinking, you know, maybe I'd teach you a lesson, but. I, I noticed those wires and Kim said, just touch one. <laughs> yeah, nothing will wake you up quite like getting a shock, huh? No, that's for sure. That's that's true. I was going to try it on the kids in the morning, but they just won't go for it. Um, <laughs> sorry. Does anybody have anything else or any other thoughts on anything? I don't. I think we've covered a lot of ground in the amount of time that we've been on the phone and I appreciate everybody's patience. Um, any thoughts on anything? Otherwise, um, we'll reconvene two weeks from today at five o'clock and Jocelyn will do her amazing due diligence as always and send out a, a Zoom. I'll do it. I'll even remember the meeting this time. <laughs> you remember them all the time. No, I don't. <laughs> I didn't remember this one. Oh, um, you were able to meet on the 25th, Jen? Yeah, we can go ahead and put that on the calendar and then um, I will get my appointment moved. You sure? Yeah, it's not okay. a problem. Okay. Oh, the 28th? Is it the 28th? It's the 20th. It's, I'm sorry, 28th, yes. 28th, okay. yes. yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can't no, no. That was my bad. 28th. I'm on the 25th, yes. At 5 p.m. And... Um, Jen, you and I can connect on the, the budget and stuff too, so. Yeah, uh, let me know, uh, Jonathan, if you wanna just send me that budget form ahead of time, I okay. can start to pull some stuff together and then um, be a little bit ahead of it before we All meet right. and kind of finalize. I'll, I'll forward it to you um, tonight or tomorrow morning. Perfect. Okay. Uh, anybody have anything else? I'm all set. No, okay. I'm good. I'm gonna go to the phone. All right. Um, since there's nothing else, I need a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn, Jocelyn. I'll second, Jen. There's a motion on the table to adjourn. Um, we'll go around for roll call. We'll start with Jen. Jen, I. Ken, oh, you're not a voting member, but vote on this one, Ken. I support it. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Jocelyn. Aye. 
Nicole? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. The ayes have it. We are all set. Um, thank you very much, everybody. I think we um, covered a lot of material and a lot of ground. And thanks, everybody, for continuing to use Dropbox. Good night. Have a nice weekend. Everybody. Thank you. Have, have a, a great night. night. Have a good night. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.